Accidents can happen to you anytime, no matter what you are doing. An accident can have tragic results for you. I'm Vincent L. Toffany, President of the National Safety Council. Accidents are a universal problem and a very serious problem. Every year accidents claim over 100,000 lives. Accidents are the fourth leading cause of death of people of all ages and the leading cause of death of people under 38. Accidents are not just statistics in a book like this. They're individual tragedies of pain and suffering for the victims and deep anguish for their families. The ironic tragedy is that any accident could have been prevented. The way for all of you to prevent accidents that could kill or seriously injure you is to learn more about safety. That's what this program is all about. Yet even as you watch this program, three persons will be killed in accidents and another 300 will suffer disabling injuries. There's something you can do about it. Learn all you can about safety and then live your life practicing safety every moment. Accident prevention is your responsibility. You'd think that happened less in the laboratory, wouldn't you? After all, what's lab work all about? It's precision, accuracy, and being alert. But accidents do happen in laboratories. Why? Because there are so many more hazards here. Flammable, infectious agents, open flames, radiation, chemical vapors, electricity, glassware, poisons, caustics. Laboratories are full of potential dangers. So here, more than anywhere, safety is important. And safety doesn't just affect you. It affects your family, your co-workers, all the people around you. Okay. Everybody have you lay down on your tummy, okay? Daddy will help you. Just right down over on your tummy. That's the boy. Oh, that's terrific. There you go. Daddy, you'll just hold the hands there for a second. Children, husbands, friends, co-workers, they all have to get painful shots because a woman accidentally punctured herself and contracted hepatitis. You see, in the laboratory, even minor incidents can become very serious. Today, we're getting more and more concerned about infectious diseases. Personally, I think it's time, because too many people run the risk of getting infected right in the lab. So don't take chances, my friend. Handle every specimen as though it's high risk. You know to wear a lab coat and use disposable gloves. What's more, make sure specimens from high risk patients are clearly identified and covered until you're ready to work with them. No mouth pipette. Use a safety device like a pipetta. Wear an apron when you should and use a fume hood whenever it's necessary. When you're finished, Destroy those used needles and syringes immediately. Remove your gloves before leaving the lab and dispose of them properly. And don't forget, your lab coat belongs in the lab, not at home. Always wash your hands with hot water and soap, especially before eating, drinking, or smoking. Good personal hygiene is your best defense. Infectious agents are just that, infectious. So be alert. If an accident should happen, report it immediately and get the proper care, right away. Gee, I don't remember ever using this. That ought to be okay.
chemicals in a lab can be deadly. You wouldn't touch a rattlesnake without thinking. So why be careless about handling chemicals? Maybe it's because they look so harmless, but they're not. Every chemical is potentially dangerous. Every person who works with chemicals has got to know how to handle them properly. First, everyone must know how to read and understand all chemical labels. For example, everyone needs to know the label means that the chemical has a low flash point. It's got to be kept away from heat, sparks, and open flames. That label also means that you must not smoke around this chemical. It means you have to keep the container closed, and you shouldn't store it near oxidizing materials. They support combustion. What about storing chemicals? Each has to go in its proper place. Flammables should be kept in approved storage cabinets. Water-reactive chemicals should go in a cool, dry place. Acids belong in a special cabinet with an acid-resistant lining. Or if they must go on a shelf, put them close to the floor in case they should fall. Store and dispense flammable liquids in approved safety cans. They reduce the chances of laboratory fires and explosions. Or use the new impact-resistant plastic-coated bottles. The coating contains glass fragments and prevents dangerous spills. Know which chemicals belong to refrigerators and those that need explosion-proof refrigerators. Leave the label and always check expiration dates. Of course, nothing can keep you completely safe if you don't use it. You've got to protect yourself. For that, you need the right equipment. What's right for you? Well, that depends on the work you do and what you're working with. You might need safety glasses, and goggles, face shields, respirators, gloves, rubberized sleeves, disposable lab suits. Be careful of long hair or loose clothing. They can get caught in machinery or equipment. Wear flat, sturdy shoes. Women shouldn't wear high heels or shoes with open toes. Look out for yourself. No one can do that better than you. Ah, he get used to it. After a while, he don't smell a thing. Do you say Kenneth worked in a lab? No. Now I think it was the stuff I was breathing. I'm so sorry. There's just no way to know for sure what caused your husband's cancer. It could have been the chemical vapors. But, as I told his employer, we just can't be sure. No one used to worry about being exposed to chemical vapors over a long period of time. Now we do. Because we found that an excessive accumulation can kill you. For some people, that knowledge came too late. Working around chemicals is hazardous, so I'll say it again. You've got to pay attention to protecting yourself. Read labels. If it says use with adequate ventilation, make sure you do. Always have proper ventilation. Work inside fume hoods when you should. We are beginning to learn about what's called the synergistic effect of chemicals. It's a way that chemicals can combine with other substances to become more harmful. For example, if you smoke around chemicals, your lungs take in not just the smoke, but the chemicals too. And that mixture can be dangerous. No one really knows right now what that can do to you. You don't want to take chances with your health. So don't eat or drink in the lab. Don't smoke in the lab. And don't put anything on your mouth or in your mouth when you're in the lab. Just because you can't always see the danger, that doesn't mean it's not there. Under certain circumstances, lab people must monitor chemical vapors and collect airborne samples. That's the only way you're going to know if what you're breathing is excessive. Did you ever get to Le Mans last night? Oh, yeah, we did. Well, it was wonderful. We both had your last contained crab legs. Oh, but you know who I call? Here, Carolyn? Oh, how is she? She's doing really well. She has a handful with her baby, you know. <laughs> spill is problem enough. Not knowing what to do only makes matters worse. What should you do? Let's take another look. First, remove any contaminated clothes. And flush the chemical from the skin with great amounts of water. Take care of the victim right away. And what do you do with this mess? You can't ignore it. You've got to clean up the spill right away so no one else gets hurt. Wear the necessary equipment. Maybe it's an apron. 
goggles, gloves, face shield, respirator, or even self-contained breathing apparatus. Determine the type, concentration, and quantity of the spill. Get the appropriate cleanup kit or a cleanup pillow if you don't know what kind of spill it is. Follow the directions. Making sure you know where the nearest water supply and fire extinguisher are in case you need them in a hurry. Sprinkle the neutralizer and absorb it, first around and then into the spill. Mix it. Then wait till the color changes. This means scoop the mixture into a disposable bag that comes with a kit and dispose of the bag into a recovery drum. A chemical spill is one accident. If you don't take care of it right away, in the right way, you're going to multiply your problems. But you know, even if you follow all lab safety precautions, even if you yourself do everything as safely as possible, your lab will still not be free from accidents. Not without a total lab safety program. The first step to a lab safety program is a written safety policy, approved by the top management official. It should say that it is the responsibility of everyone, managers, supervisors, and employees to carry out the safety program. Next, you should consider starting a safety committee. These people should attend special training sessions conducted by recognized organizations such as the National Safety Council and the American Red Cross. Back in your lab, the committee promotes safety awareness. They study the rules and regulations which apply to your lab, and then they conduct training programs like first aid and firefighting. Most accidents are caused by a combination of unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. Eliminating those unsafe conditions goes a long way in preventing accidents. That's why safety inspections are critical. An inspection team must make regular inspections. They have to see that emergency phone numbers are posted, and evacuation plans, too. They check that fire extinguishers are in place, working properly and inspected. They test eyewash fountains and deluge showers. They check electrical outlets with a ground monitor, and they check electrical wiring. The inspection team checks fume hoods and trash receptacles, and they check general housekeeping that there's no evidence of eating, drinking, or smoking, that aisles and exits are clear, that conditions are neat, sanitary, and orderly. Your laboratory is only as safe as you make it. For that, you've got to have the proper training, the proper equipment, and always use the proper procedures. What safety really takes, though, is extra care. That extra thought about yourself, about your family, and the people working around you. After all is said and done, isn't it worth it? Uh...